Okay, well, we're in Colossians chapter 3. We're working our way through the book of Colossians. Uh, we teach verse by verse here at Calvary Chapel Beaumont. If this is your first Sunday, we want to take you through the entire Word of God. Now, uh, the great thing about going verse by verse is uh, we can skip over anything difficult, uh, controversial, or just things we just don't want to talk about. Going verse by verse, we got to talk about everything, and that's a good, good thing. Uh, we've been talking uh, lately as we've been going through the book of Colossians. The Bible says that we are to let the word of uh, Christ uh, dwell in us uh, richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Then it says, whatever you do in word or deed, do it all for who? For Jesus. Do it all for the Lord. Now, so in layman's terms, that means whatever you and I do, must be for Jesus. Then we have to ask ourselves, well, pastor man, what happens if it's tough? We do it for Jesus. What happens if I don't want to do it? We do it for Jesus. You see, as the word of God is dwelling in us richly, the word of God corrects this and corrects this. The word of God convicts this and corrects this. So as you and I are in God's word, it's going to guide us and direct us. Uh, the Bible says that the word of God is what? Is a, a light unto my path and what? A, a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So, so God's word illuminates where we're going and where we should go. This is the purpose of God's word. That's why it's important for, for you and I to stay in God's word because it, it helps us what we call this stinking thinking. Anybody ever been there sometimes? When you get in God's word, you're like, ooh, I shouldn't be thinking the way that I am. Let me bring my thinking in line with the scriptures. We don't want the scriptures to come in line to our thinking because our thinking sometimes is jacked up, right? So Jesus, I want to come to that which is, which is my ruler. I'm cutting it straight. I want to bring my, my thinking in line with your inerrant word. And when I do that, I'll have some challenges, but I'll know exactly what you want. And then I'll also know where my blessings are. Now, we're not talking about just, uh, um, uh, just throwing out scriptures. Hey, the Lord says that he's going to open up the windows of heaven if I do this and this and this. Uh, that, that's biblical. But what we're talking about is our blessings are waiting on our obedience. Be careful that we don't gravitate to all of the scriptures that talk about blessings and blessings and blessings, but require no obedience at all. Uh, you'll see this quote on, on the screen here that our blessings are waiting on our obedience. Maybe your prayer is, God, well, I just want you to bless me. Okay, well, just align yourself with my word and do what it says. You're like, well, there needs to be more, right? Why can't it be that simple? That we, we want the blessings of the Lord. Well, let's, you and I, align our lives to the scriptures and there will be the blessings that all of us need and desire. Today in our text, we're going to go to, to a place that'll be challenging for, for many. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, submitting, loving, and obeying. No amens for that, huh? <laughs> You're like, uh, how long does this service last today? When the word of God dwells in you and I richly, when Jesus is our Lord and we follow him, we'll have no problems loving, submitting, and obeying. As we go through our, our text today, my, my hopes are is that we would be encouraged, convicted, challenged. And if you're taking notes, our uh, pre-point is our obedience to the scriptures will be tested. Um, we can say, well, I love me some Jesus, but then we live this way. So as we read the, the, the scriptures, family, the blessings aren't in just reading it. The blessings are in doing what it says. So as we talk uh, today, we're going to talk about wives, husbands, children's, fathers, bond servants, and masters. It's going to be a two-parter because it's kind of long. We're going to talk about a good majority of that of that today, that, that no one is exempt from God's purpose and plan for them. So I'm, I'm asking ask you this before we get going, before we get going. If I told you that you 
would live the most blessed life if you simply follow what God has said. That's the service. You can go home now. That's it. <laughs> That's it. it. It doesn't get any more difficult than that. But the problem is we don't always want to do it. We don't always want to do it. So when you get to Colossians chapter 3, give us an amen. amen. And if you're new to following you some Jesus, Colossians is in the New Testament towards the end of your Bible. It's called an epistle, which is a letter. Colossians chapter 3. And if you need a Bible, there should be one in front of you. And if you need one, feel free to take it home with you. Colossians chapter 3. We're going to read verses 18 uh, through uh, chapter 4, verse 1. And let's go to verse 17 so we can get a nice flavor. Chapter 3, starting at verse 17. It says, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, submit to your own husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Bondservants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh and not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. And whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that the Lord, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. But he who does wrong will be repaid for what he has done, and there is no partiality. Masters, give your bondservants what is just and fair, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. And the church said, Amen, amen and Amen. Well, our first point tonight as we talk about. Wives, husbands, children, fathers, and bond servants and masters, for you ladies, is your submission is your worship to the Lord. Your submission is your worship to the Lord. The Bible says in verse 18, wives, submit to your own husbands. Your husband might be sitting there going, I'm so glad we came to church today. I'm glad somebody besides me is finally going to tell my wife what she needs to do. We'll get to you husbands, us husbands, in a, a couple of minutes, and we're going to camp out there for a little bit. But firstly, firstly, you ladies, it says, submit to your own husbands as fitting to the Lord. Uh, this word uh, fitting means what is due the Lord, that our actions of following the Lord's word to you is what is due him. So as we are followers of Jesus and we are submitted to him, we need to give him what he is due, and that is the submission that he is due. The Bible says, I read it to you a little bit earlier, that since we're holy and beloved, we've put on tender mercies and kindness and humility and meekness and long-suffering. We're bearing with one another. We're forgiving one another. We're, uh, we're putting on this thing called love, which is the bond of perfection. Since God is ruling in our hearts, why wouldn't we be submissive to our husbands? We're, we're brand new creations in Christ. Uh, we've been changed and redeemed. We've been renewed and restored. So since the one who has loved us, renewed us and restored us, asks us now, I need you to submit yourself to him. You're going, well, wait a minute. Lord, I have no problem submitting to you. But what you're asking here, I, I don't know if I want to do that. Our problem is lordship then. Our problem is that, Lord, I love you with everything. I was in the back worshiping, and I see many of you lifting your hands because God is great. Jesus is wonderful. But then the one who is wonderful and great says, I need you to submit. You're going, it's 2023. <laughs> Come on now, Jesus. This word uh, submit is the Greek word, hypostaso, and it means to arrange under uh, this word is a Greek military term, meaning to arrange a troop divisions in a military fashion under the commander, command of a leader. In non-military use, it was a voluntary attitude of giving in or cooperating, assuming responsibility, and carrying a burden. 
The scriptures teach and tell us the Lord has arranged it for your Jesus-loving husband to lead you. Your Jesus-loving husband to, to lead you. That this is the Lord's will if you are, if you are married. This text is speaking to the, the Christian home because obviously the world has a complete different understanding of submission but the text is talking about a, a Christian home where the, the man is, is, is leading the home, where the man loves Jesus, the, the woman loves Jesus, where, where God's word is the final arbiter in uh, and, and arguments that, that we, we follow the word of God. This is what Paul is talking about as he's, as he's writing to, uh, to the church in Colossae, that, that wives, submit yourselves to your Jesus-loving husbands the one that has set you free and redeemed you and restored you. Jesus, you want to submit to him. So it would be inconsistent for us to say, I love me some Jesus, but I'm never going to submit to that guy. Maybe some of you ladies are going, do you know, do you know that guy, Lord? Lord, Lord, I, Lord, I know what you tell me to do. I need to submit to him, but Lord, I got to live with him. And the Lord says, I know. I see it all the time. (laughs) I created him. I know what his problems are. Jesus doesn't say, well, you know what? You're excused. I know what you got to work with, and oh my. So you and I have an understanding that this whole submission thing is not for you. No, 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 no. Jesus says, I know. I know, but you still need to submit. Now, I know you guys are quiet. I knew this will be a a tough message. I've I've been praying for it. But you know, it's good to be challenged. It's good to be convicted. It's good to say, okay, Lord. And it's good that we go verse by verse so you can read it for yourself, right? So think about this, ladies, wives. Since your husband reflects the mercy, the compassion, the love of Jesus, why wouldn't you want to submit yourself to a man that's in his word that's praying for you, that's leading you and guiding you and encouraging you. Why wouldn't you want that? You're like, it's 2023. I'm not going to submit myself to anybody. Just maybe, just maybe that's why the condition of marriages are where they are now. Nobody wants to follow the word of God. And nobody wants to, to, to say, Lord, this is what your word says. And regardless of how I feel about your word, we got to walk this way. Because we know it's tough sometimes. Because we love the blessings. Oh, the Lord is my shepherd. He's leading me and guiding me. We've got some green pastures and some steel waters. And then we got this guy. <laughs> All right? You're like, yay, Jesus, and pray for that guy. And then if we're not careful, family, we will think or say things like this. I'll submit myself to that guy when he acts right. You're still waiting, aren't you? (laughs) Jesus, I'm not going to follow you. I'm not going to follow your word until he changes. Does the word of God say that? Does it say, hey, when when your husband is perfect and walking on water, (laughs) then you are to submit to him doesn't say that it doesn't it doesn't say that family god has established an order in marriage and since god knows everything and since he loves you and i the best why would he tell us to do something that would hurt us again we're talking about a christian home we're talking about church folk that love jesus he he he, he's he's saying this you need to wives you need to submit to to your husbands and i'm gonna get to to us us guys in, in a couple of minutes Did you know Jesus, when he walked this planet, was submissive to his father? Let me give you a couple of scriptures. Uh, John 6, 38. Jesus says, for I have come down from heaven, not to do what? My own will, but the will of who? Of him who sent me. So Jesus didn't just wake up some morning and go, all right, we're in Capernaum again. Do I want to go that way? No. Let's go that way. No, 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 no. Everything Jesus did, he did. That was the will of God. When the father said, hey, go talk to the woman at the well. Well, father, I'm a Jewish man and she's, she's a woman. Yeah. Go talk to her and give her 
an opportunity to have some living water. Go tell that leper you are willing. Jesus wasn't doing his own thing. John 8, 29, it says, and he who sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone for I always do the things that please him. Ooh, we just sang about the cross, didn't we? Ooh, what did the Bible say? For the joy set before him, he what? Endured the cross. He could have said, Psh, father, those folks in 2023, so not worth this. They think they're so smart. They think they know everything. No, but the Bible says, for, for the joy set before him. He didn't say, Lord, he said, Father, uh, can we talk about this for a second? For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame. I bring this up, that when God asks us to do something, it may not be easy, but it doesn't mean we should shy away from doing it. That, 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 that for, 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 you, for you wives, Submitting to your husbands may not be easy, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Be careful at, at only doing that which is easy. What if the Lord wants to pour his greatness in you, fill you with his spirit, that you might uh, uh, submit to your husband because it's your worship of him? That's a beautiful thing. But if you're not bringing yourself to the Lord, saying, Lord, I'm finding it hard to submit to that but I'm willing to submit to you. Fill me with your spirit. Lord, I, I, I need your help in order to follow your word for my life. What's the Lord going to say? Nope, try it on yourself. Try it on your, try, try it on your own power. No, 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 no. He's going to say, I, I've got some, some, some spirit of God, some power for you to be obedient to my word. You'll see this quote on the screen here. Family, we read the word of God and follow it. We bring our actions and thoughts in line with the scriptures. Bring my actions and my thoughts in line with scripture. Now, if we're to be honest, there's times when our actions and our thoughts are so far from the scriptures, the Holy Spirit says, what'd you just say to them? <laughs> You're thinking, what? So then, Lord, bring this and this in line with your word. 50% of marriages end in divorce. That's in the church and out of the church. You would think, hey, in the church, well, we, we've got Jesus. We've got the Holy Spirit. We've got the word of God. What's the problem? Headship and lordship. That, that if Jesus is our Lord, oh, we don't hit eject on stuff. Lord, I need your strength and your power. So Jesus, if in your, in your, 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 your plan of things, if my blessings come through my submission, if, if, if the life you have prepared and planned for me comes through my submission to whom you have led me to, or uh, led to me, then I'm willing, willing is a horrible word, then I'm, I'm submitting myself to your will and to your way. Listen to Ephesians 5.22. It says, wives, submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. So you see here that, that our worship, that our actions are our worship, that we submit because it's our worship. We may not feel like it, but we submit because this is what our Lord says. And, and, and we want to keep it real simple. We read and do. Read our scriptures and then we do what it says. Now, it might be hard. It might be challenging. But to that I say good. Because then we need to continue to say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I cannot do this on my own. And Lord says, I know. I know you can't do it by yourself. That's why, that's why I am here. So I want to encourage you, uh, you wives, and those of you that um, well, may be wives uh, in the future. This is the, the biblical picture of how God blesses, blesses a family. So wives, you guys can leave now. <laughs> Verse 19, we need to ask ourselves, what's, what, yeah, don't leave, just kidding. Uh, what, what commands does the Lord have for the man? You're going, it's about time we got there, right? <laughs> Listen to verse 19, it says, Husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. Our next point uh, this morning is your obedience to the word of God reflects Jesus. 
Our obedience to the word of God reflects Jesus. Uh, this word um, love is this, as the Greek word agapao. We, we know this from John 3, 16. For God so agapao, for God so loved, uh, loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. We, we have to ask ourselves this, family, uh, men, when you and I are loving like Jesus, what godly woman wouldn't want to submit to a godly man? When you and I, men, husbands, are loving us some Jesus biblically, what Jesus-loving wife wouldn't say, yeah, I'll follow that. Yeah, I'll follow that, because you know what? I'm not waking him up for church. I'm not saying, hey, honey, me and the kids are in the car. You got an extra hour of sleep. Wake up. No. No, he's, he's going, hey, honey, Here's your coffee. Kids, whoosh, get out of bed. Time to go hear about some Jesus. As the wife sees the husband reading the word, God forbid she would see you even praying and hear, praying her name. Lord, bless my wife. Fill her with your spirit. May she be obedient to your word that she might be all that you desire her to be. Who wouldn't want to follow a godly man like that because he... He has your best interest in mind. Let me give you uh, two uh, quotes on this word agapao. John MacArthur writes that uh, agapao expresses the purest, noblest form of love, which is volitionally driven, not motivated by superficial appearance, emotional attraction, or sentimental relationship. John Phillips says agapao, the highest kind of love, spontaneous love, love irrespective of rights, the word carries the idea of making much of a person. When a wife knows that her husband loves her with his highest kind of love, love irrespective of rights, love that makes so much of her, she feels no resentment over her responsibility to render loyal submission to her. So it is important that we, yeah, somebody, uh, somebody call, somebody call. Jesus, we pray that you would comfort and guide and that you would fill and bless with your spirit, that you would be magnified uh, right now. We ask these things uh, in Jesus, in Jesus' name. All right. Yeah. We'll trust the Lord. The Lord's got it. The Lord got her. The Lord will keep her. The Lord will keep her. God bless, God bless her, Jesus. God will take care of her family. He'll take care of her. She was having some blood pressure issues. Uh, she told me about, we prayed for her about earlier. So this, this word agapao, uh, this word that means that we are to, uh, we are to love, that this love would be uh, sacrificial, that, that, that the, the man is to make much of his wife. That, that when the wife feels loved on and cherished and cared for, she has no problem in, in, in following his lead. Uh, we went to uh, several years ago, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, or a little longer than that, uh, we went out to, to lunch with, uh, with uh, uh, some folks from church. And as we, uh, as we all got out of the car, I noticed that she didn't get out of the car. And I'm going, hey, Sheila, get out of the car. We're all hungry. You know what she was waiting for? Her husband to open the door. I'm like, if that's the way you got it, then okay. I'm like, you stay in the car. We're going to go eat. She knew that her husband made much of her. So much so, all of us are outside the car going like this. You know what she was doing? I'm going, you going to get up? <laughs> Waited for her husband to open the door. When he opened the door, she's like this. <laughs> he closed the door. I'm like, oh my goodness. If that's the way you guys do it, then, then amen to that. But what's beautiful is that he makes much of her. So she has no problem submitting to him. That when a godly man serves his wife, there, the submission isn't even a problem. Why? Because 
she knows that this Jesus loving guy loves her. That, that, that's, that's, that's how, our, our, that's how our, our blessings flow, family. Ephesians 5.25, it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Jesus loves the church. This is just the building. You know what the church is? <whistles> Jesus loves us. So, so husbands are to love our wives just as Jesus loves the church and gave himself for. The church is the, the bride of Christ. What a tall order that Jesus asks if you're married, if you're a married man, he asks you, he tells you, think about loving your wife, pray about loving your wife. When your love acts right, looks right, and is right, then love her. No, 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 no. You would love your wives as Christ has loved the church. Well, the Lord, you, you don't know her. You don't know what I've got to work with every day. No, I know her well because I, I created her. You go love her. And not love her on your level. You love her on my level. You love her just as I love the church and gave myself for, for the church. Now, if we're not careful, family, we're going to think, well, if he would just put the toilet seat down, right? <laughs> if he would stop washing the red towels with the white towels, Never in a million years when I'm doing laundry am I going, ooh, I can't put a red towel with a white towel. Someone might come over to our house and think, oh my goodness, they can't do laundry. I mean, is that really a thing? You're like, wash, drying your hands off. Oh my goodness, they washed the wrong towels together. You, you go on there, you go, guess what? I dried my hands off and they don't know how to do laundry. <laughs> That's not the problem. The problem is not pre-washing dishes. It's not putting the toilet paper roll on upside down. These, these aren't the issues, not leaving remnants of toothpaste in the sink. These aren't the issues. Now, you're laughing because for some of you, it is an issue. <laughs> you're like, you're a grown man. Are you telling me? <laughs> this is cold. I mean... For some of you in your house, these are issues. These are things. The issue is here, and the issue is here. You've let remnants of toothpaste. You've let non-pre-washing of dishes to somehow turn off the faucet of love. Maybe your spouse, if they're to be honest, I don't always feel loved. Crazy. Well, since I don't always feel love, then maybe there's someone else that can love me better. I mess around and somebody say, hey, well, that's a pretty dress. You're going, oh, this whole thing? <laughs> Tell me again. <laughs> and then some, some place in your mind going, hey, my man hasn't complimented me in a long time. You remember when you first started dating? You went out to that restaurant and you were looking in each other's eyes. You're holding hands while, while, while the, the food was coming. You know what's crazy sometimes? And we go out to eat a lot. And, and, and there's some folks that are up in age. They're sitting there and they're just. The woman is. I'm thinking, you've got some years on you. And you have nothing to say? going i want to say hey how are you doing and maybe that's for some of you you go out to eat with your lovely and there was a time when you used to share a meal not in our relationship because i my wife's got to get her own food right <laughs> if you want more food you should have ordered more right we don't we don't do the sharing type of thing hey pray for me but my food is my food right but but there was a time when 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 you're like hey you want to bite, you want to bite of my food and you're like, <laughs> you want something to drink. Now it's like, get your own drink, get your own straw, right? 
And I want to encourage you, if, if that's where you are in your relationship, let me give you just a real quick, easy way to fix this. So when you get home, uh, get a little piece of paper, do like a number one through five. The first one is, and this is how you, how, the questions you should ask the next time you go out to eat with your lovely. Hi. <laughs> right? Number two, how are you doing? Right? Uh, uh, number three, what wonderful weather we're having. Hey, uh, number four, anything on your mind? Uh, number five, uh, are you sure nothing's on your mind? Hey, number six, I want you to know that, man, I love you. Man, I don't know what I would do without you. Who wouldn't want to submit when they feel loved on and, and, and cherished? The submission is, isn't, even, isn't even an issue then when this happens, but what tends to happen in marriages is, is if and when you don't make me feel a certain way, then no soup for you, right? right. If and when I don't feel this, this, and this, then I'm not going to make you feel this, this, and this. No headship, no lordship. This should not be so, family. This is inconsistent of a life of a believer. Let me give you one more scripture before we hit the kids, um, or hit the kids. <laughs> Welcome to Calvary Chapel, Beaumont. <sighs> Moving right along. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. Jesus, help me. It says, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does his church. All of us have enduyoed clothes. We've, we've put on clothes. We've, um, uh, we, we take care of ourselves. We, we shower. We put on some deodorant. We, we brush our teeth. If you have hair, you comb it. You, 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 you do all of these things. Why? Because you, you love yourself. So the Bible is saying Take that same self-love that you have, love your wife. Because it says nobody hates their own body. The world says, well, you know what? You can't get what you don't have. You know, you need to love yourself. No. When was the last time you walked past a mirror and you didn't look? <laughs> Try it. Walk past the mirror and just go like this. Something in you is going to say, look at yourself again. Like somehow we've changed in the last two or three minutes. We, we, my wife and I were, were driving somewhere. And you know that one mirror they, that you ladies have like in the hotels where it like magnifies your pores? She had one on her lap. I'm going, who wants to see anyone's face that close, right? I mean, it's like your, your, your pores were like craters. I mean, who wants to see that? And she was just in the mirror and she's just doing her thing. I'm like, oh my goodness. We love us some us. The Bible says that us husbands are to love our wives as we love ourselves. We, 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 we eat several times a day. We, we put on, some of you, too much aqua velva and Old Spice. You know, yeah. we, we, we dress ourselves. Uh, some of you are really, really into, uh, uh, into exercise. So you, you're eating, you're riding, you're, you're doing all of these things, but yet your wife is starving. Something wrong, something wrong. That maybe as, as you're going home to today, you're like, interesting message today. <laughs> I see you're looking good. Um, I would like to feel how you look. Let's walk out for a second. I would, like, I would like the same attention that you give to self. I would love to feel that upon me. I, 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 I want your, your, the, the, the attention, the time, the dedication that you put into self. I want to feel what that looks like. I, I, I want to feel that. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to feel that. I want to, I want to live in that. I want that to be my reality, that as you love yourself, I want you to love me. Because none of us rarely deny ourselves of anything. 
So the word is talking about you, you Christian loving men. We are to love our wives the same way that we love ourselves and we love us, some us. So maybe before the service is over, before you go to your car, maybe you and the Lord have a few, a few words and say, Lord, you know what? I'm, I'm not there yet, but I desire to be there. Uh, Lord, I'm, I'm encouraged with what I, what I heard today. I'm on my journey. Uh, help me. And then maybe, if not maybe, since husband and wife have a conversation today. So what that guy was saying today, what are your thoughts? You know, uh, what areas in, in, in our marriage uh, can I do better? And then ask her the same question. Hey, what areas in our marriage, you know, can, can I do better? That way you're at least uh, having the conversation of, of where we are. Because if you don't have the conversation, these underlining tones are going to continue to, uh, to run through your marriage. And the Lord would have a Christian marriage be focused on him and him alone first. And then everything, tri the blessings trickle down from that. So maybe the problem is lordship, first of all. The reason why you're not loving your wife is because Jesus isn't your Lord. Because when Jesus is your Lord, we are going to not only do our best, but we're going to ask the Lord to help us to love. And we're all on our journey with that. And maybe you're sitting there going, Psh, my man is great. Good for you. Good for you. But there's many marriages that, that aren't great. Sometimes people say, well, we never argue. That's because you never talk. <laughs> right? We never argue. Uh -huh, uh -huh. On to the beautiful children. <laughs> Verse 20. It says, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is what? Well-pleasing to the Lord. Our third point uh, this morning is children, obey your parents. We could even say it like this. Children, respect your parents' authority. Young people, why is this important? This is important because your parents should want what Jesus wants for you. If you ever ask your parents for something that Jesus does not want for you, the answer should be no. But whenever you ask your parents for what Jesus wants for you, the answer should always be what? Yes. Yes. So just maybe, young people, you're asking the wrong questions. Can I have an iPhone, what, 25, right? <laughs> no, because you're in kindergarten, right? <laughs> I know where you are. I'll come and get you as soon as the time is right. You don't need to text me. No. Hey, mom, can you bring us? No, I know everything. I know where you are. And if we're not careful, family, the, the world is, is painting this picture that parents are idiots. The world is painting a picture. You see in the commercials, they're on a family trip. Kids have their earphones on and not that that's wrong if that's you. Like, oh my goodness, stay with me, right? <laughs> the world paints a picture that parents have nothing to offer no wisdom. So, hey, just get in the car and put your earphones on or whatever. Just totally check out. Like your parents have no wisdom. Like your parents have never been kids. And I can tell you what, the, the kids of this generation are missing out because they think you're idiots, right? They think you don't know anything. They think you're, you, you, you wake up in the morning and go, okay, hey, honey, how can we ruin our kid's life today? What do you think we should do? Should we tell them to get out of bed? It's, it is noon. <laughs> oh, no, that might cause them to be in a, 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 bad, a bad mood. Okay. I mean, oh, my goodness, family. If we're not careful, as the Bible says, there was a generation that knew not the Lord. Children obeying their parents is a beautiful thing. And most of us here are a little, are a little older we know exactly what happened when we did not obey our parents. We, we knew what happened when we took our parents' car. Some of you kids are going, you did that, Mom or Dad? Ask your parents later on, so tell me your B.C. days, right? Before Jesus days. We are, uh, children are to, to respect, to respect uh, their parents. And again, uh, the, the parents' job, uh, young people, is not to make your life miserable. The parent's job is to mirror Jesus to you. 
The parent's job is to keep you and, and, and protect you, not to, not to ruin your life. And I can tell you this, young people, if you have the mentality of each time I talk to my, my parents as want, 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 you're missing out. Especially for you young girls, you're going to grow up and meet a guy that's going to just rip your heart to shreds. Oh, but he's fine. Ask your parents. Tell me about what I don't see. You know what your dad's going to say? I just met this guy and I already know him because I used to be him. Hey, Mr. So-and-so, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm going to take your daughter out. And you're like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Been there, done that. So be careful, young people, of, of, of thinking your parents have no wisdom, no wisdom to offer because there was a time when we did the things that you're currently doing and thinking about doing. And we've suffered the consequences for these, these things. So Jesus says, children, obey your parents. It says in, in some things, in the things you think. No, it says in all things. Why? This is well-pleasing to the Lord. You want to please the Lord? Young people, listen to your parents. Your Jesus-loving parents, because your Jesus-loving parents will never keep you from anything good. And I wish we had the youth in here, but we don't have the, we don't have the space to do it. But I'd but love, to, love, to, love to tell them, talk to your parents. Put your phone down. Hey, mom and dad, this is what I'm going through. How do I navigate this? I mean, my, my, my feelings are all over the map. You know, my, 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 my hormones and emotions. I just, I don't know how to navigate where I am. I need you to guide me and direct me. But instead of that, yeah, good morning. Yep, good morning. Yep, thank you. Thank you for being my sous chef and my personal chauffeur, yeah. Don't forget, I need you to pick me up at 2.30. Then we got this practice and that practice, and yeah, I need you to fork out a few thousand dollars that I might kick a ball around for a, a couple of months, but thank you. Jesus, help us, kids, right? That, when was the last time you asked your, your, your mother and father, hey, how are you doing? I'll wait. How are you doing, dad, as you're leading the family? as you're working all crazy hours that we might have lights on and go to Disneyland, uh, what's it called, a year subscription or year, whatever we got, all of these things. Be careful, young people, that you don't think your, your, your parents are out to ruin your life, to make sure you have like no fun at all. That's not your parents' job. Your parents' jobs are to love you and to model Jesus before you. And sometimes the answer is you've got to be out of your mind. Of course you're not going to do that. Of course you can't go there. Of course you can't date him. And you go, like, well, my parents, they don't know anything. They've been where you are. And they have scars that you know nothing of. So you want to know what's real? Ask your parents. Hey, tell me. Tell me what's your biggest regret. And we've got a couple. We have got a couple. So children, you want to be blessed? You want to live a blessed life? Follow your Jesus-loving parents as your Jesus-loving parents are following Jesus. Paul says, follow me, what? As I follow Christ. You want to live a blessed life? Obey your parents, because this is right in the Lord. Your parents have never been parents before, so it's, a, it's the first time out of the gate. And as parents, we're, if we're going to be honest, we're like, whew, Jesus, we're going to need your help on this little one or this big one. He says, yes, good. So family, keep dragging your kids to church. Bring them here because only here and hopefully in your household are they going to hear about the greatness of God. Where else are they going to hear about the greatness of God? Not at school, that's for sure. But you bring them to church. If you have youth over in our youth room right now, they are hearing about Jesus verse by verse just as you are. If you have little people here, we're giving them Jesus. Why? That they might hear about a great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. They may not want to wake up on Sunday morning. Get up anyway. Amen. Because one day, the rubber is going to hit the road. They're going to have a giant in their life. And if they don't know that Jesus takes care of giants, that Jesus is more than able, that Jesus is their guide, they're going to wind up being lost for years, and that's been some of you. Some of you, sometimes I hear people, hey, I've been, I haven't been to church in 20 years. They're saying, hey, they got lost out there. Life happened out there. 
Keep bringing your kids to church. Keep telling them about Jesus. Encourage them. Hey, put your phone down for five minutes and let's, let's read just a few verses and talk about it. You might say, well, they don't want to. Well, they also want to have ho-hos and Twinkies for breakfast, right? So we want to encourage them to live for Jesus. Uh, before we go to communion, um, Jesus says, I've come that you might have life and have it what? More abundantly. Jesus didn't say, hey, I come that you might have a boring life. Well, you have to come to church for 52 weeks out of the year. You can't uh, smile. You can't have a great time learning about me. No, I've come to tell you, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't do this. So you can walk around going, I'm a Christian. I just can't do anything. But man, Jesus is so great. I mean, wow, my life is so horrible. I mean, wow, there's nothing that I can do. The Bible says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus has provided a phenomenal life for all of us. It may not be perfect. It may not be without pain, trials, and tribulations. But when you and I live our lives according to Jesus and his word, it's always going to be blessed. Because that's his word. His word says that you and I will be blessed if we walk and live this way. And, and there's ever a time when we, uh, when we are strained from the path that's why you have a church family that says, hey, how's your marriage? Well, it's all right. Well, what do you mean? Are you loving your wife the way Christ loved the church? Oh, well, you know. Nah. What happened to us keeping each other accountable? Men, how are we doing? How are we doing, men? Hey, are you loving your wife? Would your wife agree with what you say right now about her? then let's, let's step it up. Hey, let's meet once a month or well, once a week and, and, and encourage one through the scriptures. And ladies, hey, next time you see one another at the, at the women's Bible study, hey, how are, you, uh, how are you doing in loving your man by submitting to him? Well, you know, he keeps messing up. Then ask you about that. Are you following God's word for your marriage? That's what I'm asking you. When we do this, family, we're gonna encourage one another to, to live biblically. And this is what we want to do. We want to, we want to live biblically. Well, this will be a, a two-parter message. There's a, more scriptures that we, uh, have, to, uh, we have to tackle. Uh, I'm going to give you a few take-home points, and then Pastor Jim's going to come and lead us through a time in communion. Uh, the first one is, uh, what areas in my life am I not submitted to the Lord? And then why? And then lastly, and this is already online if you don't get a chance to write it all down right now, Lastly, if uh, we are not loving like Jesus tells us, are we, are we sinning and why? Jesus, we thank you for the moments that we've had together to talk about your word and to be encouraged. Jesus, you know that we need you. We are in great need of your power and your strength. I ask that you would comfort, that you would encourage, convict, and then fill us with your spirit that we might be to the praise of your glory, that all that we do is for you and for your kingdom. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 